This is Central Texas Living with Ann Harder. Hello, everybody. I'm Ann Harder. Today, we're going to look back at a pivotal point in American history and talk about World War II. It brought about massive changes in American life. And there is a very special art exhibit right now at the Bell County Museum that will really give you an insight into one man's view of that whole experience as he served in the Pacific Theater. Joining me now is uh, Coleman Hampton. (laughs) (laughs) It's great to be here again, Anne. I always have to giggle because you have two first names and two last names. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) I always say, did I say it right? But Coleman, it's great to have you here. Well, thank you so much. And you just celebrated an anniversary. Yes, my wife and I's uh, seventh anniversary was yesterday, so we're very excited about that. And uh, to remember the name, my wife always says Coleman like the Coleman lantern. Coleman like the lantern. Hampton like the end. So that's a good, uh, I don't know if it's a mnemonic device. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, well, you, we, we go through this every time I introduce you. But yeah, it's, and I've known you since you were newlywed, I think. You had been right. married but a couple of years when <laughs> you came to uh, Central Texas Living, the television show, because uh, there's so much going on yes. at the Bell County Museum. Absolutely. Um, and uh, you've been director there how long? Coming up on five years. If yeah. you can believe it, in February, it will be five years. And uh, the thing I loved about that show, Ann, is that it gave cultural and, um, you know, it gave culture and the arts an opportunity to, yeah. to t- you gave people talk, time to talk about their events exhibits, music. That was just a really Yeah, had a lot of musicians program. on the show. Yeah, and just uh, on the, only on the air a couple of years, but it was it was a blast for me. And and that's why I'm so glad now you're a part of the podcast Absolutely. that carries on I the name. This. And we have even more time to to get into the tall weeds if we want to um, about a subject. And now the Bell County Museum was also featured on Traveling Texas with Ann Harder and that's right. where I became familiar with the Galt Archaeological Mm -hmm. School, and uh, you've got so many great things there. And I have to say, you know, knowing you so many years, I just hadn't had the time to come to Belton and see the Bell County Museum. But I was fascinated with the story of the Carnegie Libraries. Right. And that beautiful building is an old Carnegie Library. It's such a fantastic centerpiece, and it was the original Bell County Museum. Um, it was the Bell County. It was the Belton Library from 1905 until 1975, and in 1975 it became the Bell County Historical Museum, and then in 1991 the Bell County Museum. So it's a wonderful Beaux Arts building. It's one of the oldest buildings uh, in Bell County. I think the courthouse and the Methodist Church. I'm, I'm I'm probably missing a few, but if you look back at historic pictures of Belton, um, it's always there, and it's such a it's such a beautiful building. And thanks to our members and the friends of the museum and the uh, county, the city of Belton, we've been able to preserve that Carnegie Library. And uh, you did a show on Carnegie Libraries. I think there might be only 10 or 12 or 13 left. Right, that are still, I I believe there's one in uh, Bryan. Right. That is still functioning also as a museum. In this case, there are a few. I think uh, there's one other one maybe in Palestine that is still a library, which is just remarkable. But the architecture is beautiful. And, of course, you have a wonderful addition as yes. well there at the museum and and have these traveling exhibits you have some wonderful mm-hmm. static exhibits we'll talk more about that in a bit but but this traveling exhibit is special it's it's very special and we're just so proud to be able to bring it to bell county this traveling exhibit is the world war ii art of private charles j miller um, private miller served in world war ii for three and a half years mostly in the south pacific and while he was serving during the day when there was time off or, you know, they weren't engaged in battle, he would draw sketches of everyday life. He was not a trained artist. You know, he was self-trained. He drew before the war. He drew after the war. But while he was serving, and I think this is the really unique part of this exhibit, is that Charles Miller was in the South Pacific, you know, fighting for our freedom during one of the most consequential wars in American history. And he took the time to draw scenes of everyday life, you know, soldiers 
taking it easy, you know, in the canteen. There's some some battle scenes, but he drew over 700 drawings um, that are cataloged. He probably actually did more than that because he would give drawings to his friends uh, that were there in the South Pacific with him if he asked if they asked for yeah, them. Yeah, that probably several were given. <laughs> and and he didn't have an art store nearby, probably to go and buy supplies. I mean, he even he just drew on whatever he had. That's right. <laughs> he drew on um, cigarette cartons, pieces of cardboard, <laughs> paper. It was it was just whatever he had available to draw on. So he really had that. Um, you know, the, the artist, the heart of an artist to capture um, what he was seeing, what he was seeing. And I think that, that there weren't, you know, cameras or I'm sure there were cameras at that place, but it's it's just, it's a very unique um, exhibit. So once he Mm -hmm. returned home, he uh, filled in with water, you know, filled in the graphite drawings with watercolor. And one of the most unique parts about these pieces of art is that he, at the time of the drawing, he would write what's kind of like a visual diary. So he would write in, you know, comments and those are still uh, visible on the painting. So it's just, it's just fantastic. Well, is, is he still alive? He's not alive. Mm -hmm. He, he um, passed in the 1980s. Mm -hmm. Oh, the paintings, the 700 paintings, um, he never exhibited them during his life. He, after he came home from World War II, he worked menial jobs, worked as a janitor, but he always found time to paint or to draw. Um, and that's something that he did throughout his lifetime. So his wife actually gave the paintings to his niece and nephew. Thankfully, um, for for all the decades that, um, that that art was stored, it was stored in a dark place. So the vivid colors remained because they weren't exposed to sunlight. Right. If they'd hung, hung them up at their house or whatever. That's right. They it would probably have faded. would have faded. Oh, um, my goodness. So, well, and that they saw the value absolutely. in what he had done. Yes, and I, I think he himself was a really humble man and mm-hmm. probably Sounds didn't, like it. didn't think that uh, they were – you know, worthy for sale or display, but they ended up in a museum in New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. And, Which is uh, where he was from, right? That's right. Yeah. He was he was from Nashua, New Hampshire. Um, the museum. So, so how did you all hear about this collection of artwork? Well, we at the Bell County Museum, as as we said, as you said, we have you know, we're always looking for something new to bring mm-hmm. to Bell yeah. County, and sometimes we do in house exhibits that are focused on. County history, for example, last summer we had the Bell County Sports Exhibit. Um, we have an exhibit this summer called Electric Bell County, which is about, you know, electricity coming to the area. Hmm. But we're always searching for either national or statewide, um, ex- you know, traveling exhibits um, to, to bring to the people of Bell County. So honestly, I was um, just surfing the web and... We had never heard of the exhibit. I found it. And um, a really important thing for, for museums that are booking these traveling exhibits is, you know, if it's open on the on the calendar. So mm-hmm. we saw right. that if there was available. an opening, mm-hmm. and uh, we contacted the Wright Museum of World War II in New Hampshire and got everything arranged, and they shipped it down that to Belton. So, so, <laughs> so there are seven, 700 pieces in the total collection. How many do you have? We have 120. Wow. So um, we have 120 pieces of art um, in the gallery, and it's just really, really striking. Yeah. Well, and I think what's important for people to know, it's always free That's to right. go to the Bell County Museum. Yeah, we're, we take a lot of pride in that. We have free admission um, to the museum. Most of our programs are, are free. We have um, traveling trunks, educational activities. So so everything is free um, mm-hmm. at the museum. And you can see this exhibit um, until June. What a neat glimpse, though, especially for younger people, to to see from the mind's eye of a man serving in that war what what he was seeing because um you know as i mentioned that world war ii really changed the whole dynamic of of american life because um the uh, 
well, there was a lot of movement, you know, during the war, people were moving to the parts of the nation where the war machine was, you know, underway and they were, you know, doing their manufacturing and such. And then the GIs came back and they went to school and like my dad on the uh, GI Bill, and then the little boomers came along, which would be my generation. But, you know, the more removed we are from World War II, uh, the more memories dim, and sadly, members of that generation are, are passing away. They're in their 90s. Right, and that that's one reason that we felt it was so important to bring this exhibit to Bell County is because it it gives a glimpse into the everyday life of what war is like. And, you know, war is not a glorious uh, thing. It is n- a necessity. So it's but, not romanticized in any way. Right. No, yeah. it, and it, it's also interesting because most, um, a lot of uh, historical documentation on wartime is, you know, the, pr- the time preceding battle, the battle and the aftermath. There's not yeah. a lot of you know, documentation of just every day. Yeah. You know, what do the soldiers do during enormous periods of downtime? Mm-hmm. And so to have it both written in kind of this visual diary, I mean, the uh, his handwriting is literally on the paintings. And something wonderful that I think the Wright Museum of World War II did is they've transcribed what he wrote on Good. the paintings. So they're on, uh, they're on the uh, text cards. They also kept any misspellings that he might have had. Yeah. So sometimes instead of invasion with an S, he would spell it I N V A T I O N. So yeah. they've kept those and just kind of it feels really authentic. authentic. And it um it gives people an idea of what that time, you know, fighting in the South Pacific was like. And the paintings are really um fantastic just visually. Yeah. Well, I mean it it's really exciting, and and of course you've had the opportunity to you know be hands on in developing an e- exhibit there. Let's talk a little That's bit right. about the the static exhibits or the permanent exhibits <laughs> there at the Bell County Museum. Well, so three or four years ago, we we knew that we had to replace or update our Bell County history exhibit. Uh-huh. The exhibit titled Passport Through Time uh, was a wonderful exhibit in its time, but it um, had seen little change from about 2000 to 2020. So 20 years yeah. of the <laughs> same kind of a, permanent exhibit. Yeah, that's a big gap. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's, in the, it's on the first floor mm-hmm. of the Carnegie Library. So the staff um, and I spent years um working on a new permanent exhibit of Bell County history. And what we decided to do, and instead of doing a chronological history, you know, 1890s, 1900s, right, right, we um, examine the county's history through themes. So the themes are the land, Mm -hmm. agriculture and ranching, transportation and industry, and education and culture. So in that way, we tell the... um, we tell the county's history, but we kind of look at these four major themes um, that answer the questions, why did people come here to Bell County and what did they do once they got here? So we, we really wanted to start from a very simple premise and then just build it out into a really meaningful exhibit. Of course, the railroad's very important. I mean... Oh, absolutely. You know, the, the railroad's throughout Texas history have been um, so important. Yeah, there's a story of the, the Santa Fe Railroad um, signed a contract with the city of Belton. The city of Belton gave the Santa Fe Railroad $75,000 to run the railroad through Belton. Yeah. Well, what ended up happening is the Santa Fe decided to create their hub nine miles north of Belton, in a place that was at that time referred to as Tanglefoot, and that became the city of Temple, oh. which is named after Bernard Temple, who was one of the uh, who was one of the railroad executives. So really, I never knew that story. Temple was yeah, and it was a real um, oh man, it really created <laughs> a lot of uh, I bet it did <laughs> bad blood between Belton and Temple, but also you see, that, Temple is I'm not sure that that's changed much <laughs> still today. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, it's interesting. Temple grew 
completely out of the railroad. Yeah, it, yeah, um, yeah. The Santa wow. Fe Hospital, they had the, um, the oh, yeah. restaurant I mean, that's and their, all of the homes. Oh, sure, that's all there. So, yeah, those some of those big, beautiful homes there. So it's interesting. That is a, that's fascinating. Of course, I love Bell County and, and love so many of the folks there that, that I know. And, um, of course, UMHB right there, though, in Belton. I mean, you've got, you've got a, a rich history there as well. And, uh, you know, one of the permanent exhibits there is the Galt archaeological site that I mentioned. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I said, I kind of think I know a little <laughs> bit about Texas, but I walked in and I thought, what is this? I'd never heard of it. Yeah, the Galt archaeological site is something that I would recommend everyone read up on, visit if you can. Our museum hosts a tour every other month. We rotate with the Williamson right, Museum. Right, because the Galt Georgetown. site is right there close right, to the, Florence. <clears> you the know. Galt site is uh, in Florence. I think it might be technically in Williamson County, yeah. but the road to access is, is in, Bell, <laughs> in County. Bell County. So we, so you guys we share. kind of share. <laughs> you share. Well, it is fascinating. Of course, I've had uh, Dr. Warnicke here on this program as well and did a traveling Texas there based on what I learned at your museum well, when we that, came there. That's just, it's so wonderful to hear in because that's, that's one reason that we have the exhibit there is to bring awareness <laughs> Yeah, that, you know, in right in Bell County in central Texas, we have one of the most significant archeological digs in the country, yeah. maybe the world. And, um, turned what's taught in the textbooks Totally, totally on end. That's right. I mean, <laughs> so, I mean, it's, yeah, it was a, a massive discovery yes. there that uh, ancient peoples were there many, many thousands of years sooner than, than we thought. Um, of course, another one of my favorite things there is the, your mustache cup collection. <laughs> Loved that. Well, and, and you'll be <laughs> excited. So we, starting in the early 90s, the museum... Uh, Receive several large collections of mustache teacups. Yeah, and, uh, and they have a little, a little ceramic, a, like a, a lip ridge, ridge yeah. on it to keep to keep those wax mustaches back in the day from melting the wax into their hot coffee or tea. That's right. <laughs> so we um, we received one donation of two hundred mustache cups, then another. You'll be excited to hear that over the past two years, we've received, I think, another 400 what? mustache teacups. So <laughs> we're, we're uh, solidifying our uh, claim, and I think it is a truthful claim that we have the largest collection of mustache teacups. Uh, and it's just, <laughs> it's something that visitors really enjoy. It's not, doesn't really have a Bell County connection beyond the, the fact that the people in Bell County would have used them. Yeah. But yeah. it's just, um, it's what I would I would say is kind of a curious collection. It's just something interesting. But people love the mustache cups. Yeah, <laughs> well, I did. I had more fun there that day when I got, I got to come and physically visit the Bell County Museum. And you're located, it's easy to find, right there on Main Street. Yes, we're right on Main Street, 201 North Main Street. It's about two blocks north of the, the county courthouse, so it's... It's easy to find. Um, we have a wonderful, you know, 16,000 square foot space now. Um, and we've yeah. actually started doing exhibits in the second floor of the Carnegie uh, oh, Library in our Carnegie Auditorium. Uh-huh. So, well, that's um, a nice space. So the it's, stage a, it's a beautiful and, yeah. space. So we, um, we've added some kind of AV, you know, a drop down screen, some speakers. Mm-hmm. One of the feedback, um, some of the feedback that I've gotten in the past, we, we've had a wonderful spring lecture series yeah. that I've, um, <clears throat> we started upon my arrival. One of the issues was some of the people in the back couldn't hear right, right. the speakers. So yeah. we added, uh, we added some speakers there and, um, and it's just, it's a really nice space. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. And when we come back, we're going to hear a little bit more about uh, Coleman and his work at the Bell County Museum. Hey, I'm April. Hey, I'm Caroline. And this is Bloody Happy Hour. Your newest true crime comedy podcast. So grab your favorite drink and join us every week for Thirsty Thursday. We promise to tell you the bloodiest stories and give you a laugh in between. Go find us, follow us, and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. Because guess what? We're about to be sipping on some murder.
F-bomb. This is Mandy and the F-Bomb, where we shed light on stories and invite you to find your place and purpose in the world of foster care. Through my involvement with families involved in foster care and being a foster mom myself, I've learned that it's the things that wreck us the most profoundly that can stitch us back together into the best, purpose-filled versions of ourselves. Tune in to Mandy and the F-Bomb. It's stories that invite you in to find your place and purpose in the world of foster care. You can find us anywhere you get podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And we're back with Coleman Hampton, who's the executive director of the Bell County Museum, about their wonderful display of artwork by a World War II soldier. That's right. And what he saw as he served in the Pacific Theater. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a major work for folks to take in, to really kind of mm-hmm. get a glimpse into the everyday life of a soldier. Yeah, it's it's very important, you know this this exhibit, the artwork of World War II art of Private Charles J. Miller. It gives a real insight into what he experienced while fighting for three and a half years during World War II. These are paintings of you know men in the canteen, sometimes you know taking a break or relaxing. Uh, they're just scenes of everyday life, and they're accompanied by his handwritten notes. Yeah on the scene kind of describing what's happening. So in one painting, he is describing uh, an air raid signal. So they, the men are just kind of, you know, hanging out in camp and there's an air raid signal because a plane is coming in. So he wrote that everyone jumped into their foxholes. It ended up being a um, an American plane that had not identified itself, but it kind of, I'm sure there were many other times where it was a, an enemy plane. So it just, his, um, the artwork along with his, these visual diaries that he's added, um, is wonderful. We had an opening, uh, for our members, oh, a few weeks ago. And most of the people that came said, you know, we really need to come back. Oh, good. In fact, we had, um, our board chair and a few of our supporters came back and spent almost two or three hours going through, so you can, re- it's an exhibit that you can spend 10 minutes in or really, I mean, honestly, three really hours. Really dig in deep. And I wouldn't say that about every traveling exhibit that we right. have. Right. But this really is one, and I just oh. want to get the word out on it because it is very special. Yeah. Well, of course, as a, as a, a museum and a, a, just an important part to the community, a gem there in, in Belton, uh, I'm sure you have a lot of support from the community and a great board. Yes, we yeah. have a wonderful board of trustees, and our county commissioners are yeah. very supportive. Um, the county and and our friends of the museum are the the lifeblood, along with our visitors and people that come to yeah. all of our programs. So we're we're just really fortunate to to be a resource in Bell County. And once again, as we mentioned earlier, um, admission is always free our traveling trunks that we give to schools, our school tours, um, everything is free. So it's very acceptable, uh, very accessible. Mm-hmm. There are no, no paywalls or anything. Oh, that's great. That, that's great because the more people know and understand about their past, um, you know, the better they can move ahead in the future, I think. That's right. Yeah, we just want to, to create better citizens yeah. to help educate, but we also want it to be fun. Yeah. So it's... Um, <laughs> You can experience any museum in, in any way that you like, but the good museums, and I think that we are one of the good museums, allow for a, any any type of interpretation, whether you're there to learn, whether you're there socially, yeah. whether you're there to just kind of have fun with your kids. Just mess around for a little bit. There are a bit. lot of different <laughs> layers. Yeah. So. so what got you into this kind of work? When did you know, oh, I want to be a director of a museum? So... Um, I went to Baylor and got a, B, a bachelor's in history, uh-huh. which was a wonderful uh, experience. Actually, uh, D- Stephen Sloan, which I oh, think yeah. does a, in the Waco History Podcast here, was one of my really influential. And so you haven't been on professors. his podcast? You should. I haven't. Have. You know, yeah. I need to. I need to get in touch with him. Yeah, get and, in uh, touch with him. He's been on this one, so yeah, <laughs> okay. we've we've had some. 
had some fun. Yeah, I, I, yeah, he's he's wonderful. He's, he's great. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, he was he was one of my professors in in undergrad, and then in, in grad school, Baylor has a museum studies um, master's program. Right. Yeah. So one of only two in the state. Mm-hmm. So I went through the Baylor master's program. Yeah. And was very fortunate um, after I graduated to um, become the director of what was in the Central Texas Area Museum in Salado. It's oh, right yeah. across the street from the stagecoach. Oh, yes, end. I know. Yeah, and, Dave Swarthout uh, is now. That's right. <laughs> I, know that. I know these people very well. <laughs> so I um, I was the, you know, I was the first paid, Were you paid really? staff member. Uh, um, that is cool to know because, yeah. yeah, it's a lovely little museum. And they've been c- continuing to do improvements they there. Really that, of course, that is an antique building. There's so mm-hmm. many beautiful, beautiful things and really old things in Salado as well. Right. Mm-hmm. So I started I started my career cool. there and really um, <laughs> led what we called the revamp. We, we merged with um, College Park, which right. is the, the remains Overseas, of... Overseas, the remains of the Salado, Salado College. College. Yeah. So those two which entities is beautiful merged. Too. Um, yeah. Lots of places for people lake. to go and right. do some visiting. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And then after that, I became the director of the the Bell County Museum. So yeah, it, natural. Um, I've always loved there. museums. Yeah. I think they were they're really valuable in society. Yeah. Um, and just something to keep our history and but also as a community gathering place. So I. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm really uh, fortunate to to be in Bell County, and I think. Uh, <laughs> The position, it's just one of the, when I was in school, one of my professors said, if you ever become a, a museum director, you will do something different every day. You know, it's not, no yeah. day will ever be the same. And I think that's almost true. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's the elevator is broken or uh, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> there's a leak. stuff you'd rather not but, be dealing with. But, but yeah. other times, you know, something, someone might bring something in, yeah. a really interesting piece yeah. of history or, you know, it's just a, it's a wonderful profession. Um I think the I'm now I now teach as an adjunct in the Baylor Museum Studies program, yeah. so it's great mm-hmm. to kind of get to relay those experiences yeah. to our next uh, yeah. set of of uh, museum professionals in Texas. Yeah. Good. Well, now you say you listen to a lot of podcasts, but this is your <laughs> first time to be on That's one, right. and so. All right, Coleman, I like to end these visits with a questionnaire. This is similar to the one the late, great James Lipton used on Inside the Actor's Studio. And uh, the first question is, what is your favorite word? What is my favorite word? I think beautiful, honestly. I I probably use that word more than anything, hopefully not too much. (laughs) Well, what is your least favorite word? Oh, goodness. Um... I've never thought about this before. Um, I don't know. We'll say uh, dull. Okay, very good. Um, all right, the questions get better. What what turns you on creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? I think I kind of I know you well enough. To, I could kind of guess, but. I think mostly family yeah. relationships, you yeah. know, um, and then creatively just the idea of, of putting something together that will foster uh, love and, and connection between people and relationships. So then what turns you off creatively, spiritually, or emotionally? I think creatively, um, whenever, I think whenever you start thinking really deeply about your own success and get involved in the self and start making decisions that way or making decisions based on uh, money or, you know, anything, uh, self-promotion, I think that can really get you into a a creative quagmire that that hinders the creative process. So Mm. I always, um, I've fallen prey to it, you know, sometimes, but I always try to catch myself and say, you know, you're doing this for the people, you know, for the citizens. It's not, uh, it's not about me. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. What sound do you love the most? The sound I love the most, um, besides my daughter and wife's voice, of <laughs> course, um, the sound of a rushing river yeah. I've always just just loved. Uh, we yeah. grew up camping in New Mexico and Colorado, and that sound of 
of rushing water is just is my oh, favorite. Oh, cool. So what's your least favorite sound? The sound of any machinery clanging or metal <laughs> banging together. I know construction is not, but just any uh, industrial loud banging sound. Okay. <laughs> it's uh, not my favorite. Not your thing. <laughs> All right. Well, we know what brought you to your profession. What other profession would you have liked to have tried? I think I would have loved to... Uh, be a fly fishing guide or to own <laughs> well, a, a fly okay. fishing shop. You're all right now. You're um, dressed for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I wanted, I think physical therapy is something that yeah. I worked in some and that's a really relationship driven thing. Yeah. So probably a, a fantasy would be a fly fishing guide, but the, in the reality, something like physical th- therapy Ooh. or something in the medicine. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, medical field. So what profession do you know you would not want to do? Oh, goodness. Um, I don't know. I, I think I wouldn't uh, wouldn't want to do anything where where I did the same thing every day. I'm not sure what that would be. Yeah. Um, but yeah. working, I've, I've worked in uh, call centers before and things like that, and they are necessary. But I think anything that kept me indoors a lot, yeah. um, but... But I really, I mean, there are times in my life I've done all sorts of work, and I think the work has, every type of work that I've done has been um, good. Yeah. So so I, th- I think all jo- if um, people are willing to get out and work, you know, there is no bad job. I guess I guess it depends on, <laughs> I'm going beyond the, <laughs> the, uh, the question. But yeah. So there's, there's not anybody, any job even like, Immediately, you know, you don't want to do that. When I see um, (laughs) the wonderful, brave men that are working out on the highways in the summer, that's that's probably one job that I want. I don't know. know. I don't know how they can do it, but I applaud them for doing that. (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. All right, Coleman, last question. What do you want to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, I think I want him to say that you've... you've, um, You've done what I asked, and you were a good husband and father. Thank you, <laughs> Coleman. It's a delight always to be with you, and you too, I'm Anna. so excited about this uh, this art exhibit that's there at the Bell County Museum. I hope a lot of folks will take the time to to check it out. Thank you so much. Come by anytime. We'll we'll give you a good tour. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Ann. Central Texas Living is part of the Rogue Media Network family. Be sure to check out their other shows at RogueMediaNetwork.com. Please rate us five stars on iTunes and anywhere else you get your podcasts. Join us again soon for more Central Texas Living, the podcast. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.